Can you hear me, oh. brother? I can hear you perfectly. How are you, my friend? We are live, my man. Just Good. so you know. Just so um, you know. Oh, can can you see? Is my camera coming through? No, I can't. I can't oh, that's it. weird. Uh, because it was working in the preview. Hang on. <laughs> uh, wait and start this. There we go. That's better. Hey. Hello. Hey, man. How you doing? Uh, how good to are see you, man. man. Great to meet you, good man. To, how are you? Good. Good to finally meet you. Where are you based? I'm Melbourne. I know you're oh, in Sydney. Right. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Whereabouts in Melbourne? Uh, without well, being too specific, lo- I'm not looking to live dox you on your stream. <laughs> don't worry. Don't need to get too specific. About Are you close to the city, far away? You're near a beach? 40 minutes from the city. near okay, Slightly yeah. near a beach, yeah. I don't know. You've yeah, been nice. to Melbourne, haven't you? I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. a bunch of times. Nice but, place. Great coffee. Yeah. Love it. I yeah. have Italian heritage, so, you know, it's sort of... Uh, I feel very close to my people there. It's got a very strong Italian-Greek influence. Oh, really? Yeah, you've got a big family, don't you? You've got a bunch of brothers and... Yes, and, I do. I do. I mean, I can't imagine what your wedding would be like or your i mean <laughs> not that bad no? it's not that bad actually but uh, i've been to like uh, lebanese weddings uh man they're crazy they're just yeah. like hundreds of people super loud chinese weddings as well i've been to have you ever been to a chinese wedding no i haven't oh dude you are missing out they're incredible again like uh, hundreds of people and they hire out entire chinese restaurants and then they feed you like eight courses two of those courses are <laughs> <a> lobster <laughs> They have like a bottle of Hennessy on the table. It's like the life, man. Trust wow. me. If you've never been to a Chinese wedding, you got to make yourself some Chinese friends, get invited to their wedding. You have the time of your life, trust me. I've got Chinese friends, but they just don't invite me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe that's oh, me. Man. But no, nah, man, it's a pleasure to have you on. How have you been? I know you're busy um, with a few games. Last of Us just came out on PS5. How'd you go with that? That, uh, yeah, that's that's the thing that happened. It was a game that rolled through. I was not particularly excited for the, uh, the what do you call it, the uh, review cycle on that. Last of Us is a very difficult game to talk about now after The Last of Us 2. Oh, and man. so I was like, all right. Plus also the remaster with the price tag attached to it, it's, you know, it immediately puts people's back up and whatever else. But um, but man, it's it's look, it's 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 good. I liked it. I recommended it. Um, but the comment section is pretty brutal. The like ratio in that video is pretty much the like the worst like ratio that my channel has had in years. And all I was all I just said was like, yeah, this is pretty good. But I was like, nah, man, is, you know. Look, and it's I get all because it, though, of like the seventy dollars, isn't it? That's the biggest thing that people uh, can't. No, you don't think so? Well, I think I think it's a combination of the fact that it's also the response that people now have to this franchise where mm. people just have a unhinged reaction to Vitriol. how it all went down <laughs> with two, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I did not enjoy two uh, very much on the record about that, but I think some people really internalize that in a really weird way. And also like the, you know, some of the stuff from Naughty Dog and the way they approached it and whatever else, like Naughty Dog threw out their own little jabs. I don't think they did anything to deserve the sort of backlash that they got though, just to be super clear, but it was just a a generally very sort of acrimonious um, sequel. And Mm. it's definitely, I think, had a lasting impact on the the way we talk about and remember that franchise, uh, which is a real shame because before then, Last of Us 1 was like, hey, a lot of people think it's the best game ever. Some people are like, eh, I didn't really like it that much, but that was where the conversation stopped, you know what I mean? And now it's this whole culture wars thing, which is a real shame, so yeah. Uh, Rui in here says, Ralph is such a hunk. Just so you know. Just so you know. I don't know about that, You don't agree. Should have gone to Spec Savers, my friend. Should have gone to Spec Savers. Hey, what do you think Naughty Dog are going to do next? What do you think their next big IP is? Do you think they're going to go back to Uncharted or Last of Us? Or do you think it's going to be something completely different? Well, I think I remember hearing that that Druckmann's working on a new IP. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, they are. That's what I heard. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. So... I mean, obviously, they're working on that multiplayer game in the background, which will be interesting to see. Yeah. Um, because that's a big sort of s- sidestep for the studio to focus on that as a live service thing. Obviously, they had factions before that. Did you like else, factions? I know you didn't like I Last have, of Us. You know what? I never played it. Never uh, played okay. it. I reckon I've you would like it. Yeah. A lot of people love it. And mm. I'm like, all right, well, fair enough. For that many, I've never heard a bad word about factions. No one's like, oh, it's overrated. Everyone's like, yeah, that was pretty good. It was actually pretty good, um, yeah. Yeah, so so look, if they can take that build on it, they're going to weave some narrative into it as well, they've said. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I think that could be pretty cool. I'd be interested to check that out. 
Um, it would take something to really pull me away from my current destiny addiction, I think. But hey, maybe factions is it. Dude, maybe you, that's it. Just doing some research, I saw that you got all the destiny achievements. And I mean, no, no, not all. Oh, okay. oh yeah, and Steam. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. On that, Steam. But they're nothing, though. Oh, okay. They're the easy ones. But the real thing is like getting your triumphs, you know, oh, in game. Okay. Like, your, I don't know if you played WoW or whatever, like yeah, those yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. Tro yeah, yeah. So the getting the achievements on Steam is super simple, but uh, the triumphs, no, I'm, I'm, there's some other guys I play <laughs> with and they have almost all of the triumphs. And it's like, dude, <laughs> time to take a break. Chill out a bit, you know? <laughs> how much, how so, many hours do you have on that game, by the way? good question i don't know Let's is that is that your chill out game when you're not really yeah, yeah 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 it's actually the only one so i'm at i'm at uh 1300 700 1370 hours right that's now. that's not too bad actually um yeah. that's not too bad nah. i mean compare that to my world of warcraft days that's pretty br that's pretty light on um oh you're well yeah, no. yeah 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 that was that was, that was a guilds and everything like really into it progression rating four or five nights a week oh, hardcore, wow. you know server first guilds all that shit that made me the nerd I am today. Um, Shit, yeah. But no, the the Des Destiny is the chill out game that I have now, and it's it's the only one that I have because y I guess in this job, kind of need to really um, prioritize what you play based on the release oh. schedule. Um, and then it's like, well, you've got so little time for anything else. What's the one? Because I would also like to be able to play Final Fantasy fourteen, for example. Like, I'd really love to be able to sink big hours into that. And, that review's you know, coming, that yeah. Be, very soon yeah yeah absolutely i promise absolutely <laughs> right after this fucking podcast i'm gonna get right on that you know just stay uh, tuned and bloodborne um, did you ever do Bloodborne? That's right, the sekiro one as well <laughs> yeah, that's Sekiro. It. Yeah. um uh, but yeah you just have to prioritize you know like i just i you have to choose one game and destiny is the one that i have chosen it's like i choo choo choose you it's it's, it's that <laughs> one you know so well yeah. i don't know if we're gonna get much time man the next few months it's gonna be pretty busy <laughs> yeah that's true the release schedule is like it gets nuts at this time so um yeah but that's fine though like i just you know play a bit of destiny that goes on the back burner for a little while during september october november all the big games hit and then come back to it for december for the next season lightfall in february very excited dude that so i i, I sort of dropped out on destiny a couple of years ago but that lightfall dlc got me hyped like that Hell was yeah. that is such a sick concept. I think that that actually got a lot of people to that point. A lot of people yeah. that had never really they were like, "Oh, Destiny sucks" or whatever. A lot of people were like, "Hey, that looks pretty cool," you know. Um, mm -hmm. So Bungie really chose very wisely on that. Uh, yeah, that, that is just looking fantastic. So yeah, yeah. What, why is it that game though that that speaks to you? What what is it about that game that keeps you coming back? I'm just curious. I, I mean, it's a lot of things. I, I do firmly believe it is the best shooter on the market in terms of its raw mechanics and gameplay. And I think most people wouldn't really argue too strenuously against that. Some people are like, actually, it's COD Warzone. It's like, all right, fair enough. But I mean, I like I think most people are pretty agreed that the, the mechanics that underpin that game are the best on the market. Um, I think what really appeals to me is that like WoW was such a defining game in my youth but I can't do that anymore. I don't have time for that, right? Mm. The, the, the commitment that WoW demands of you is too much. And I think why Destiny is as... One of the reasons why Destiny is so successful is that it manages to give you so many of the highs that hardcore MMOs give you, but it gives it in a far more condensed form and in a way that's much more accessible to people who are older and have more going on in their lives, you know, because when you're a university student, fuck it, man, you just sit there, play WoW for 14 hours. Like, that's it. That's all you got going on. But when you get older, have a life, a job, kids, fucking whatever. Uh, but De and Destiny slots into that really neatly and give me those, gives me those MMO sort of vibes mm. without asking what an MMO typically asks. So that's and why it's my thing. You have a crew of Aussie guys you play with, or do you play? Yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got uh, we've got one American that runs with us. Um, yeah. And but yeah, the rest of them are all Aussies, and yeah, they're really good guys. They're um, cool. Yeah, some of them are fucking crazy ass players, just like top, you know, point three percent PvP players, that sort of shit. Some of them are just <laughs> normal dudes like myself, you know, just get the job done. Uh, but it's a good mix, and I like hanging out with them, so it's nice. That's great, man. So I think. What are you? What's your? What's your? What's oh, your like you go to? You, you want to really want to know? You, oh, you, like, you mentioned like, it. What is it like? World of Tanks or? <laughs> no, you mentioned it before. Warzone. 
Oh, okay, I've fair got, enough. I've yeah, got about cool. 1,500 hours in Warzone. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Are but, you happy with where the game's at? Or is it no, like, oh, this is shit, but I still play it? It's shit, but I still play it. <laughs> it's in <laughs> a terrible, terrible position, man. It's in a terrible position. I mean, they It's cleaned... about to hit, get a sequel, isn't it? Like a yeah. Warzone 2 kind of thing. Yeah. Warzone okay. 2. It's, it's cleaned up the hackers. That's one thing. But they changed the map, and the map is just so uh, hilly, vertical, and you're constantly looking, you know up and down and getting lost in the vegetation. And there's just a lot lot wrong with it. They don't update it very well. You know, for, for a studio like Activision to not, you know, you know how much money they have over there and resources. It's just bizarre how they put out this product. It's still like the gunplay holds up, but it's um, it's definitely need, need some improving, that's for sure. sure. So hopefully it wasn't and- too, yeah. Does that, I don't even, have they even released anything on Warzone 2? I don't think they've shown any kind of gameplay or described the improvements coming to Warzone 2, have they? Is there anything like that yet or what? No. Uh, there's no, an, it's event, just like there's it's an event in a couple of weeks that's going. Right. Well, I don't even know if that's Warzone. I think that might just be Modern Warfare 2. Mm. But, I mean, I don't know if you saw the Kong versus Godzilla event. I mean, it, it was and it the, was such a joke of an effect. And the Attack on Titan oh. one, or was that just was that just no? In so it was going to be Attack on Titan, but they reskinned it for because that fell through. So they reskinned that event. Oh, for that's Kong. right. Yeah, so. that's right. Because I remember seeing the the cat the Eli um, model, and it's kind of like, <laughs> what the hell is this? Yeah, right. Okay, and sure, you don't. Sure, sure. It's just oh, I don't. I don't know if you've seen gameplay, but it is. Um, Interesting, but I still um, I still keep coming back. So maybe I'm the dummy after sure. all. But um, so how do you deal with that sort of backlash on those reviews that you get? And because you know, there's the console wars and all this crap sure. that you have to deal with as a reviewer, and you can't get through to everyone. If you if you put out a review, let's say with your Assassin's Creed Valhalla review, you didn't you didn't really like it. Whether as you know, I uh, you know, yeah, well. You know what I mean? Generally yeah, speaking, yeah, yeah. Sure. compared to a massive fan, and then after they see that review, they go, "I'm, I'm never trusting this guy again because sure. I, I love Valhalla. It's a ten out of ten. Sure, that, it, it must be a tough position. That sort of, do you, you see what I'm saying? I do, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I, I think I definitely cared about that a lot more when I was starting out mm. because. You know, you're like insecure. You don't really know how all this works. Yeah. You're worried about, oh, someone quote tweeted me and <laughs> dragged me and they said my review is dumb. And you're like, oh, you are, you worry about it and whatever. And like, yeah, I was definitely feeling that in different ways. But yeah, not anymore, to be honest with you. Like, That's uh, good, man. That's good. But, That's but, how you have to be, I think. I think so. But I think it comes from just experience and knowing that no matter what you say, that's going to happen. I think it also comes from confidence in what you're doing. And you're like, well, because I think, I think when you start out, you're sort of, you're not really confident in your own viewpoint and you think, well, did I say something wrong per se? And really, I think what you eventually realize is that like, your viewpoint is what matters the most. Like when people come to you, what they're seeking more than anything else is a perspective. And so long as you give that perspective clearly and honestly, then then you're okay. You know, you might get some facts wrong. You might say, oh, this feature is missing when it's actually there, whatever. And sure, you can tighten that up and whatever. That's your due diligence, your hygiene factors. But the most important thing is like your perspective. And as long as you're upfront about that, it gives you a lot of confidence. You sleep pretty easily at night when people come at you, you know, like lost judgment, for example. I'm like, I don't like this. I think this is really, really badly written. I think that this is not good. <laughs> and everyone's like, that's the worst review you've ever done. How could you say that? It's like, okay, well, that's just what I think, you know? And I think most, a lot of people really hated that review, but some people were like, hey man, thanks. You would explain to me, you know, what you think. And I appreciate that. So, so what feedback do you take into account then from viewers? Um, that's a good question. Um, it's funny that yeah, like it's it's. I think it's. Because, I think it because yeah. I, I think at this point, I'm at a point in like the content that I make where. I have a very set rhythm and a very set format that people really like, really likes a strong word, but people like it, right? And so they're not giving me a lot of feedback on what they would like to see different. 
you know, oh, they, as okay, in like, right. they're not saying like, oh, then this week in games section, this video uh, videos suck. These are boring. This section is, is lame. You should drop it. <laughs> when you say stuff like this, it's annoying. Yeah. Like, oh, your reviews are, the people say like, oh, your reviews are too long. I'm like, well, I've been through this a long time. I don't think they're too long. I've decided this is where they're at. This is where they're yeah. at, you know? So I'm not saying that like, oh, everything I'm making is perfect right now. So what feedback could they possibly have? I'm just saying that, at this point of where I'm at in my content, people don't generally have a lot of feedback on what I'm doing. They're just kind of like, this is what this guy does. I'm either signed up for it or I'm not. They might disagree with my perspectives on things, but yeah, nothing like that. But certainly as I was coming up, I was definitely recalibrating a lot, you know, because I jumped around. I started doing the division. I started doing Looter Shoot and then I moved to Looter Shooters. Um, you know, I covered like Destiny and Warframe and had different styles in my review. I had a very different review style when I first started out. It was a lot more sort of like overdrawn, emotionally wrought, I would say, <laughs> a bit, a lot more indulgent, which is a big call even for me because I know even today I'm still indulgent. But I think I've calibrated based on those things, you know, and, and I've changed a lot of my content based upon that earlier feedback because I listened to my audience. And now I'm at a point where that feedback doesn't come as often because I think people are pretty happy with what I'm doing. And I'm really happy with what I'm doing. Like I like the stuff that I make at this point. So yeah. Ambient says fun. two legends in one podcast. Langley. Uh, I subbed to both that. these guys when Aussie worlds collide. <laughs> no. Uh, so how is your, um, how is your review process these days? How has it changed over the last few years? Cause what people don't understand, I'm this. I'm similar. I don't do as many reviews, but sure. you got to hustle. You got to play this the fucking oh, game. Man. And if the games are eighty hours, you know, if, sure. if you're getting an Elden Ring review like me two days before release, you're fucking playing sure. twenty hours. Um, yeah. How how do you go with that? Because I I believe you've got a kid as well and wife. And, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be tough. Man. Um, I mean, we've is. got a dream like, job, but you know what I mean. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, and always, I'm always always remembering that like always sort of like never taking that for granted um yeah luckily my wife's very supportive you know um and um you know like that makes it a lot easier because it couldn't really do it without that support um but yeah i mean ultimately it's just about really ruthless time management um so much of what i do is like sitting in front of a schedule and being like what are the embargoes who have i reached out to who's agreed to give me code okay cool i know i'm getting code for this game on this day how long is it probably going to take to finish scheduling that time and just like that's my whole life you know what i mean mm. uh, but also just like work like i work every day i work at least my, my, an average day for me starts at about 8 a.m yeah and i will generally work until about 10 p.m every day um i, ta I, ta I take that's not a lot i take a week a one day on the weekend off um so and i make like sure me, and i work from <laughs> yeah that's it so you just you just work all the time uh, everyone's like oh you're playing games you can't really call it work fair enough i get that perspective yeah I get why people say that, but it's not like that for anyone in this job. Like it is work to sit there and play Sifu for 12 hours straight and just grind that way or play Elden Ring for 40 or 60 hours inside of five or six days, you know, mm. um, that is actually work. And so, um, yeah, as I said, getting through that is really just about being so ruthless with my time management. Um, yeah that's, how do you how do you challenge. go with review codes these days? Cause you're a lot bigger now. It must be yeah. quite easy. Or not? Uh, uh, it's, I w it definitely wouldn't say it's easy. I would say it's, that yeah. it's always a hustle. I'm not sure how you find it. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 look, there are certain publishers that just won't give me a review code, like Bethesda, for example. Um, Nintendo have their own rules about how they um i don't think i've ever handle... gotten in contact with nintendo <laughs> about yeah, well, nintendo have a hard and fast rule where they don't give review code to any youtuber they give it to print media <laughs> yeah that's nintendo yeah, man. like yeah. that's they that's the, how they think so you've never gotten one from them either no not on no they will give you one on the release day but i don't okay. care about release day code because no. i'm like i can fucking buy my own game it's not about it's, that like yeah. i just i want I want to be able to do an embargo review so that when the reviews go out, people can come it's, to my page. And it's literally reviews, just so know? we don't kill ourselves sort of as well. The earlier, the um, better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I, I think for me, it, I live and die by embargoes. Like that's my bread and butter and that's what I work to. Oh, so you won't reviews... review it. You won't review it if you don't get it. Um, no, 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 no. I will, I will review some games afterwards. But what my focus is, I think about 80 
to 90% of my reviews are embargo reviews. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons I've been successful is that, you know, when a, the reviews hit, you're always you there. can go yeah. to my channel and you will probably find a review there. Mm -hmm. And then it gets circulated in discussions on Reddit and whatever else. Um, and that's why I fight really tooth and nail to get those embargoes. It's not about, because I was like, oh, it's free games. It's like, again, I don't give a fuck about free game. Like, <laughs> it's not that a big, it's, not, it's like, it's a tax write off for us. Do you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yeah. The money does not make yeah. a difference. It's about being able to be um, on that embargo. That's what I care about more than anything else. So yeah, I do have to say though that when I became a, a YouTuber, yeah, I have bought a lot less games. I don't know sure, about you. Sure, of course. It's just the uh, part, part and parcel. I, I buy. I think I I buy far fewer AAA games, but I buy more indie games. Yeah. And so yeah, because basically that gets me a lot closer to that scene, and I really want to like support what they're doing. Um, and so, yeah, I buy, I would probably say about 80% of my, the games I've bought recently have been indie titles. Dude, I love um, that series you started. I think it was last year with the indies where you go through. That's mm. really good, man. I, I really respect you do that because those guys, yeah. they must love that you do that. It's look, it's really nice. Obviously, they definitely reach out and, and whatever else um, makes me really happy when they send me like sales figures or like mm. wish lists. And, you know, when I do a... Because I do a shout out each week in my new show as well for a title. Oh, and you do too, like, yeah. Indies, they'll like sometimes send me like their watch, their uh, wish list graph and it'll show their like flat line that all of a sudden, boom, this massive spike owing to the This Week in Game shout out. That's cool. And that's great. Like, I love that. You know, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think obviously a lot of people get really frustrated with video games. They're like, oh, video games are shit. The industry sucks, whatever. Um, I'm like, no, it doesn't. You're just looking at the wrong parts of it. Some parts of it suck. But the indie scene is, generally speaking, really good, really wholesome, make fantastic stuff. And um, I have definitely made a very concerted effort to do what I can to help out that scene, use my platform in that way. I feel like that's... Um, that's great, yeah, man. Some, that's something that's important to me. So, yeah. I'm actually really keen to play um, Call to the Lamb and Roller Drone. I just haven't had the right. time. I will play them both. Um, yeah. But Roller Joe, man, so good. Like, and Roller Joe, you can just dip in, dip out. Cult of the Lamb's a bit more like investment. Yeah. But, um, dude, Roller Drone is so good. Like, you really have to, you got to make the time for that. It's, it's fantastic. I've heard that. I have heard that. Mm. So, the review process now. So, it hasn't changed too much since you, since you started. You've sort of nailed it now. You've got an editor, Austin. He's a legend. Yeah. How, do you, how does it work yeah. with him? You just send him the footage, some notes, and off he goes. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, exactly. Well, that's pretty much not quite notes. I'll send him the script. Actually, I won't send the script. I'll send him my audio recording, which I'll be like, and the last, oh, <laughs> and the Last of Us, to fuck. Okay, and the Last of Us pop. Oh, fucking hell! Like that is literally the clip I will send him. So a uh, video that is like fifteen minutes long. The audio track is like an hour long that I send him, and he cuts out all the swears and oh, all of the man. mistakes. Um, but yeah, so I send him that. I send him a whole bunch of footage that I've recorded that I've sometimes labeled and be like, you know, this is an example of this. This happened here um and then he'll basically chop it all together we'll talk about you know where what we want in the montages what we want for music and but at this point there's that conversation isn't too active because he kind of just knows like he does it you know what i mean yeah um, and that's the brilliance of working with one austin who's awesome but also two you work with someone long enough you know what they like and what they don't like and so we yeah. kind of have that rhythm and so he 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 works for the skill up company now or yeah yeah, he's, oh, he's a full-time awesome. employee. So yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Five days Couldn't a week. Live yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'd be, I'd be so screwed without him. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot of time to edit. I don't think people understand yeah. reviewing, editing a review, a thirty-minute review, must take days. I would have thought maybe for him. Uh, it's well, quicker it's now. funny. Austin. Well, again, Austin's very good at this. So he will generally turn around a twenty-minute video inside a day. That is a standard. Um, edit it's a, that's a tight edit though. that's like it's, pretty it's, good it's, though that's pretty good effort isn't it yeah 100 percent, 100 yeah a 30 minute video he, and he's done that for me before um but that's a big ass to do 30 minutes in a day yeah because it's not just like we're dumping any old footage and talking no. over the top of it the footage we use is always trying to illustrate the point that we're making in the script um and then you know sometimes there's some flashier stuff if we're trying to make a joke or whatever so um yeah he basically can work miracles and again that's one of the reasons why i'm still in this business because if i had to edit at this point i think i would quit youtube i, I, really <laughs> I don't think i could do it again i really don't i just couldn't so do you edit all your stuff still i, I do man but i'm, I'm looking oh, man i'm looking out there yeah 
Yeah. But see, I don't, yeah. I don't do as many reviews, so it's not as hard. But still, yeah, there's a lot of editing, as you would know. Um, especially sure. when I'm doing videos comparing two games, getting both games footage, getting the clips, compare. You know, it it, it becomes a full day for me. That's sure. for sure. But um, uh, Garbutt here says indie games for me have been much more fun than AAA games recently. Well, that's. If you've played Saints Row, I mean, that's probably true. I would recommend <laughs> Cold of the Lamb and Roller Drum over those two, that's for sure. Did you play Saints Row? Did you play it? Yeah, I did, man. I finished it the right. other day. Um, okay, what'd you yeah. think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Not, not good. Not good. Sure. I mean, you can't, you can't really deny objectively a bad game i don't know but some people tell uh, some me people, I, some people tell me yeah. i'm wrong so some people... i look everyone's gonna find different things i think it's it's yeah. fine if you're just looking for a completely mindless go and blow up cars kind of experience but i think you know most people are looking for a little bit more especially for a franchise with that kind of pedigree yeah uh people were hoping for a lot more than that title so i really wanted to you know i gave i give every game an equal chance and i really was pulling for this one because i saw the hate it was getting and I was like, oh, that's a shame. Like, you know, they're just trying to make a game. Like, you know, they're trying to reboot it. They're having a crack. Like, let, I let's, always let's, let's hope it goes well, you know? I, I always go in um, positively optimistic, yeah. you know? I, like, yeah, sure. I always go in Unless it's like a Konami optimistic. game or whatever, yeah. then it's just this, then it's, well, yeah, it's fine. A Konami Metal <laughs> <That's> Gear. <laughs> <laughs> a new Konami yeah. game, then it's, you know, different story. Yeah. So I spoke to Yong recently, a friend of yours, and he. Mm. He recently, well, not recently, but he, he back in the day, he was Metal Gear, Metal sure. Gear-based sort of channel, and he switched over to, to general games. You did a similar thing because you were Division, and then you switched more to a, a wider range. Was that a tough thing? Because that, that isn't an easy thing to do. Most channels you'll find on YouTube and gaming stick to their lane. Yeah, So sure. how, how, when did you have the confidence to do that, and were you already full-time at that point? Um, no, I, I definitely wasn't full time. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the story with that is that I started out YouTube being like, I, the re I actually started YouTube wanting to set up kind of a website that would, um, pass that would kind of like aggregate, uh, the best YouTube videos to serve as guides for video games. This was my dumb idea. Right? I was like, <laughs> okay, so YouTube, it's really hard to find wow. good, clean YouTube content that's full of, that's like clickbait free and that really answers the questions that you want. So why don't we, almost like a wiki sort of thing around okay. around games that, that just, just, just skimmed the very best YouTube videos uh, and had them all in like some kind of like list or whatever that was easily navigatable, whatever. Terrible idea. But I was like, <laughs> to do this, I'm going to start a YouTube channel, okay? And the division was <laughs> going to be this kind of springboard where I was like, oh, this website's going to really focus on the division first because it's a new game about to launch. I'd seen websites like Planet Destiny do really well out of uh, yep. Destiny and like springing up from that. Um, and that was it. But I started like making a YouTube, like YouTube videos about the division oh. and they just really took off. And um, yeah. you know, that was just, that got its momentum immediately. But after a year, it became, I don't know, it's, became pretty clear that massive didn't have the long-term commitment to the franchise or at least I, I can't exactly remember how it broke but it, there was a moment in the destiny one lifespan where it, the future updates they promised were very anemic mm. and i was like okay cool i can see that there's not much coming down the pipeline what am i going to do as a content creator because i really want to do this as a career now so i have a choice i can either stick with this game and just hope or i can diversify and try some other stuff and so I was like, well, let's have a crack. And then I started to mess around with different things. Again, Destiny was an obvious one. Fell into Warframe almost by accident and uh, got a huge sort of j bump out of that. Um, yeah. And cool. then it was randomly, I think I just randomly reviewed Neo Automata. I don't even know why I reviewed that game. I love the, I love um, the what's the title? The, the masterpiece, uh, the masterpiece you, won't, you won't play. And yeah. I, I haven't played it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, sure. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it is incredible. It's still like one of my favorite games ever. Yeah. I, yeah, I just, I reviewed that. I don't even know why. I wasn't sure if that was the first review I did, but it was definitely the, I think actually Mass Effect Andromeda was the first review oh, I did. Oh. Yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, look, this isn't great, but it's also not the worst thing ever. It's it's fine. Yeah. Um. 
And then I think it was maybe Prey, I think I maybe did after that. Uh, and then I think I did Automata. And that was the point where that video just blew up. And that was the point where I was like, hey, maybe I'm a video game reviewer now. Because I think I was just doing those things for fun. Like, again, that was that kind of like rapid prototyping, messing around, having a go at things, seeing what stuck, listening to my audience. And my audience really liked the near review. And it, that was a huge thing for me. And that, I think that review made me the reviewer I am today, basically. Mm. It set me on this path. And uh, again, I look back at that video now. I think it's unwatchable. I think it's terrible. Uh, it's the near so, review. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate it. I can't watch it anymore. It's terrible. Why is it so um, terrible? It's just the, the things I said in it, I would never say them ever again. Like just... <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible. I challenge anyone to go watch that video again. It's awful, right? Um, so <laughs> again, just so indulgent, so emotionally wrought. But I do look back on oh, it and think, well, that was obviously the impact that the game had had on me. So, and it was a very raw kind of review. Was it over based the top? Upon... Over the top emotional? What? I can't remember. Uh, I, I have yeah, seen just, it, but sure, sure, sure. But it was just, it's just, as I said, very indulgent language, um, and. <laughs> <laughs> and just not good it's not again i haven't watched it in a long time well you every can't time say that three it. million views come on well again just because get views doesn't mean it's good content but no, well, but i do think a lot of people do refer back to that video and be like oh that's my favorite of your videos and i'm like i appreciate that a lot and i recommend and i recognize that again that video came from a place of just like really loving that game yeah and being very affected by it and i think that's where that flows from yeah. but now i think having a lot more experience in doing this there's no way i would make a video like that again even if a game was to affect me in the same way and games certainly have i would talk about them vastly differently uh very, very differently um so yeah that that was that was what happened i guess yeah i just got a lot of momentum out of near and i just kept making reviews and they just kept going and that was it so it was a tricky transition in part to answer your question. Um, you know, the, the the hard part I think was the division to the review bit where I was kind of lost and I was yeah. like, what am I doing? I'm going to make Warframe videos. I'm going to make Destiny videos. I didn't know what I was doing, but I just knew I wanted to keep doing it. And uh, that was the tricky part to find that next step. But once I found that next step with the reviews, it actually flowed pretty well and I started to get traction pretty quickly and then that was it after that. So And you were a consultant back in the day right? yeah yeah it's so such a different job isn't it very different job very different <laughs> i bet job. you don't miss that uh, uh, I, really don't. <laughs> I really came to loathe consulting towards the end i was like i don't know if you have any experience in the corporate world the yeah i do yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah right sure what did you do i was digital marketing right yeah. okay yeah. sure sure and i just and look, i couldn't i i got sick of climbing the corporate ladder man i don't know about you but mm. you know i just didn't see an end goal that it, satisfied me so sure sure yeah. yeah no i think that's very much it. but i th I think the core of the work was um was just very unsatisfying to me there's yeah. like this phrase in consulting which is like um you know give give me a watch i'll tell you the time like you're just sort of <laughs> telling people things they already know or they could figure out themselves but they kind of just want someone else to tell them those things for a variety of reasons yeah. and um i i think so little of what i did was very valuable and um that whole model i just really disliked it so i was very keen to get out by the end but also i just really felt the desire to want to work in the world of video games which yeah. i've always loved since i was four years old i never thought it could be a career um because well, you tried I to get a sorry to cut you off but you tried to get a yeah. job not not as a youtuber but in the video game industry didn't yeah you? well yeah. The, the whole catalyst for that website thing was that like because you know i used to work at eb games and whatever when i was in yeah. university but then I was like, okay, well, I have to leave video games. That's not a real job, right? You can't mm. have a real job in the world of video games. And that's why I was like, I'm going to go and study finance and be a consultant. And that's <laughs> what I did, right? And uh, But then eventually I was like, well, this makes me miserable. The only thing I really truly love is video games. So even though I'm going to take a massive pay cut and you know risk risk it all, I'm like, I'm going to do this. I really. So then I started applying for jobs at video game companies. Uh, no one would hire me because I didn't have any interest. I didn't have any experience in PR or marketing, which is essentially what the only... companies in Australia do. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because we don't. Well, back then, like ten years ago, whatever, we didn't develop games. Like mm. we had a lot of development that closed down, and I was in that period where all the studios were closed. Plus, I had no technical skills anyway. It's not like I knew I knew how to make a game, but um, yeah. So no one would hire me. I went through like thirteen rounds of interview with Riot. That was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Wow. Yeah. So I went through. So in an alternate universe, you're working 
in I'm working PR. For Riot. Yes, right. Well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm sacked no. by Riot at this point because they closed their Oceanic studio, oh, their did. Oceanic <laughs> office. Yeah. So, in this in the alternate scenario, I'm on my ass. But um, <laughs> yeah. So um i yeah then basically um that was what the catalyst was for me to start this website i'm like well if no one will hire me i'm gonna start my own gaming website and then from the website came the youtube channel and that was it so that's yeah. awesome man and when and when did you yeah. go full-time exactly uh i'm trying to remember that ex- exactly but i'm feeling like it was three years ago because i think yeah i think it was three years ago i think i did youtube i've been doing youtube for six years and i started I'm pretty sure full time about three years ago. Sounds about right. Man, you've done pretty well. You're nearly at a million in six years, which is pretty damn good. I mean, okay. What- I, yeah, it's all right. Obviously, what- some people just like psh, explode. Oh, yeah. But I've always been, I've been very happy with the rate of growth. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I think more than anything else, what I'm really happy with is like the views per video. I think I'm really, that's the most important metric to me. I actually really don't care about subscribers. I care about like, are people clicking on the stuff that I make? And I'm, really happy with like how consistently people come back to the channel. That's do, you, what I really like. do you get deflated if it's a seven out of 10, eight out of 10? Oh, you know, those you know things. The, yeah, yeah. Sure. You know, the uh, analytics in the background. Um, again, like I, I think I'm, I mean, you would probably know yourself Like, you get pretty good at predicting it. You know, like when I put up a Psychonauts video, that's a thought piece that comes out six months after the game's released. I'm like, this isn't going to go one out of 10. This is a 10 out of 10 right here. But I like making it. I'm happy to put this up. Yeah. And so you do it and it's fine. Um, yeah. But then obviously you're like, hey, I'm going to put out a Saints Row review where I shit all over Saints Row. Sadly, of course, that's going to be huge because yeah. that's what does really well in the algorithm. Just that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. So... I remember back in the day you you were with your brother doing layman gaming. I'm just wondering because hmm. he doesn't do that anymore, does he? Did he? Did he? Is he done with that? Is he ever going to come? He's back? all finished with that now. Yep. yep. He's um he's actually mortgage broking now, so he's uh, crushing oh. it actually. Wow. Good um, on him. So yeah, he's um he's doing some other like creative stuff as well in the background. But no, he's yeah he's um stepped back from YouTube, and um yeah that's that's that. So I do miss those those times. They were. They were very good times, Lehman. It was a lot of fun when we were doing that together. So yeah. Because you had a, did you have a studio or something in? Yeah. With, well, um, funnily enough, Click? we were in the the Click offices. Yeah. yeah. So Click is a um, what do you call it? The like the the Fortnite guys, you know, yeah. like Loser Fruit and and Muse Elk and all those, and they had an office. They moved now, but they had an office in Surrey Hills. And we had like the entire top floor of their office kind of devoted to the Lehman space, um, which is how really did you cool. manage that? I, don't, I mean, to be honest, they had a building and they're like, well, we've got a top floor. Do you want to pay rent for it and use it? We're like, hell yeah, because the rent was very reasonable. Okay. So we're like, fuck it, let's do it. And so we get to hang out there and meet those guys. And yeah. you know, spent a lot of time with the Fortnite guys because, I mean, we're into different things, basically. And um, they're also super busy. They were always streaming when we were there. Like, um, Well, yeah, it's a different so we world, isn't it? To- totally. Yeah. yeah. That Fortnite scene is a very different world to like core gaming, the stuff that we cover, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, like La- Laser Beam had the bottom floor of that office, and we had the top floor, <laughs> which is such a weird thing. You know? But yeah. Um, but yeah, no, literally they were really the biggest good times for and... people that don't know. I think he's the biggest yeah. gaming Australian YouTuber or one of. He is, yeah, big time, big time, yeah, yeah, big time. So, so, mm. and I think you had Mus- Musel gone on your yeah. show a few times he yeah. like hosted at one point with when i was away he like hosted a show or something with my brother i, I think yeah it was really oh funny. really without you yeah right yeah yeah he was filling in for me uh at one point <laughs> and we've definitely had music on it at least once or twice and he was really great during that whole period like really supportive and um yeah he was the, really the one that was like trying to get us into the office you know just to sort of like give us a space and help us out and whatever else so um yeah he was he was really good so was it just a time thing that you had to step away because i'm guessing it's just a time thing really because yeah time versus effort by what you're getting out of it sure or yeah it was it was always the plan that i would step away from layman at some point right that was always the the going plan that sam and i had and i'd sort of stepped away at various points before then um but then at that point i was like i really need to be quite ruthless about my time and Mm. and about um because I'd just had a kid, right? And it's like, well... Oh, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, well, what what's going to change in my life? I can't do two YouTube channels and whatever mm. else. I, I already I was already working way too much and that was before my kid arrived. And so I was like, okay, what's <laughs> going to change here? Mm. And then I was like, okay, 
well, let's just make this step back from because because Layman was very time intensive, right? Lay, Layman is a date was a daily news show, and it was the daily news grind. You did streams was, and and videos every so day, much. and yeah, yeah, all that. It was so much, and so again, it was just like I have to be, I have to make a decision about what's going to go on here. Plus, as I said, it was always the intention for Sam to take over the channel. Yeah, like, that was his own thing because I had skill up, and I was very happy with that and i really love doing that and yeah i really wanted I like and we both really wanted sam to be able to have his own presence on layman and, and for that to be its own thing um so then yeah i kind of bit the bullet at that point and said all right i'm going to take that step back and make that permanent and so yeah that's that's what i did yeah well mm. good work sam and the mortgage brokering we wish you all the best <laughs> yeah. brother. i'm yeah, sure he'll, yeah. he'll pop up for movie reviews i know he's a big movie mm. buff a bit like me actually yeah he does, and he's, he said that he's still going to keep doing stuff every now and then when, when it takes his fancy. Like, he did an Elden Ring video from memory recently. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like, he still wants to keep dipping his toe in the pie, but yeah. 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 So, I want to know, what is your most, the review you're most proud of? I'm interested to know. Um, I don't know. Because someone here question. said their, your favorite, their favorite was the Red Dead 2 one that you did. Sure, mm. sure. Um, I I like that video. I think it's a it's pretty good. I um, I'm just going through my like I'm going sorting by like most views. Definitely not near. Yeah. We've we've got that one. Yeah, and definitely not near. <laughs> um, uh, I was pretty. I think there's. Uh, you got a few a question. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, oh, this is. And I'm most proud of. I, I really overall like my destiny coverage. You know, I think yep. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with the way that I, I think it's less about like a specific review with Destiny and more about the overall way that I've covered that game. I think I'm pretty proud of that. You know, I think yep. I've helped put all I think I've yeah, I've just been really happy with the kind of connection I've had to it over time. Um, Death Stranding review. That was one of my favorites, actually. I enjoyed oh, really? Yeah. That, yeah. That was when I was doing a bit of face cam stuff. I was messing about with that. I sort of got rid of that eventually. Um, yeah, I know. I was wondering yeah. why you did that. Uh, I don't know. I just did you, did you not feel natural about it, or what? Not really, to be honest yeah. with you. I think one of the things that I do think about is that, like, I don't really kind of want to put myself at the center. It's it's a weird contradiction. How do I say it? Like, obviously. I'm at the center of what I do because it's my perspective on things, but I'm not the whole like parasocial relationship thing. I'm very conscious of that. And I don't ever really try not being very clear here, but like, you don't want to put your face to the brand too much. It's not about, it's not even about face. No, I think, I think when you, when it's just a voice, I think it's much easier to really listen to the criticism or the critique or the criticism or the discussion yeah. Rather than if it's someone's face, I think that changes the dynamic, if right. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I love being this kind of like, you know, this just, I, I much prefer being this voice that's just saying these things rather than this person that's saying these things to the camera. Because I think even things like facial expressions and the way your body, anim like your gesticulation really transforms the way you're conveying information, obviously. Um, and I really just like, my writing to do all of that and i think that's what over time like i've definitely thought of myself more as a writer that's where i'm strongest i think like i i write my re every review that i do and i think that works for me um, you must so do again, like I, five thousand six thousand words per week man or more no, I, I do on average about fifteen thousand words a week between and that is insane that is reviews. insane man it's a lot like it's that a lot. is it's, a lot it's, of it's too much t yeah, yeah. sitting down and thinking and concentrating and you know yeah and oh, like, to be honest with you like it's it's not good i think sometimes i'm definitely feeling like burnt out i feel like this is not a good idea like i'm i definitely feel as i'm pushing too much and i think one thing i'm focused trying to focus on is just chilling out a bit and not trying to commit to every review and whatever but you know just i'm not very good at it to be honest with you i'm yeah I'm whatever yeah but um yeah. but yeah definitely i think uh in the last two years i've become much more focused on the way that I write. And so it was very natural for me to not do any face cam stuff because the face cam stuff, I think really took me away from the writing. Yeah. 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 So you still enjoy the writing. You just enjoy at, at a certain point. It becomes too much. 
yeah, I really love, I love that process of like sitting down. I wish I had all the time in the world to do it. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's so often rushed um, yeah. because, you know, you're trying to meet an embargo, but I really love when I'm able to go back. Like, for example, when I did Psychonauts, where I played it at my own leisure, and then I did a video much later on, and I was like, here's what I think about Psychonauts. And I was able to just write something, and I really love that because you just well, get to sit there with a blank page, and that was it. I feel know? like you could make that transition now, man. I don't think you need to abide by the embargoes for everything now because I think sure. you're at the stage where you're getting 150K for every video, no matter what it is, you know? Yeah, I could absolutely. I could definitely, I could definitely do that for sure. Because G Man, um, G Man does is sort of similar yeah. to that, where he does yep. older stuff. Yeah, sure, no, definitely. You're right. I think you're absolutely right. At the same time, there's that thing in the back of my head, which yeah. is like, well, if I just work a little bit harder and faster, <laughs> I can have, I can have my cake and eat it too. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Which obviously is ridiculous, and that's not smart, but that's yeah, that's actually how my brain works. So um, it's yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's the YouTuber mentality. It's like yeah, it's just the grind. It's like, and it's I think the grind, that's, yeah, yeah. It's it's people that are like, oh, how do you be successful on YouTube? There's a lot of ways I think to be successful on YouTube, but I think the foundational bedrock aspect is you need to be ready for what is a very, very, very intense grind. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can obviously be successful without it. I'm sure. But I don't know who those creators are personally. <laughs> I've, I've never met one. <laughs> I've never met one. Have you met one? No. <laughs> but I'm uh, sure that they exist somewhere. Like I'm sure there's some SAS to you know. I'm not sure who. who well, you know, said, you know, who works uh, one week of the month and then the rest of the time they focus on chilling out and all power to them, right? I think that's amazing. That's the dream. But uh, yeah, as I said, everyone that I've seen be successful in this space is like it's just about that that mad hustle. So yeah. everyone in this space has has put in the work but i remember not that they haven't put in the work girlfriend reviews they they put in yep. a lot of work but they they went up really quick if you remember that a couple of years ago like they had I a remember, couple of videos yeah. and it just one million views bang I, I i remember i remember when i saw them i think they had less than a hundred thousand subscribers yeah. and yeah. i left a comment on the, one of their videos that was like in before 1 million subscribers <laughs> and sure enough like a few months later they had a million subscribers because it, it's, it's like you can see some channels you can see and you're like ah this these people are going places you know like there's no way in hell this isn't going to be huge because yeah. the, the quality bar is that high you're like well this is going to go straight to the moon so yeah so wh what do you think your reaction will be when you hit a million because i remember for years going, I can't wait to hit 100,000. It's, it's like my dream. And then when you hit it, it's like, oh, great, mm -hmm. time to get to a million. You know, sure. it's a bit of an anti-climax, really. Sure. Hey, were you the same? Yeah, look, uh, to be honest with you, like, I don't really care. You don't care? Probably, no, no, that's fine. I don't really care. Like, yeah. I, I don't really, you know, and... People are like, what are you going to do for a million subscribers? And I'm like, oh, hopefully nothing. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like, I, I honestly, take yeah, yeah. I, like, it's, it's, of course, I care in, in one part. Like, it's that validation, like, cool, I made it, whatever, tick a yeah, box. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really don't actually care that much because yeah. I know how this world works. I know that 999,000 subscribers is the same as a million, 1.5 million subscribers. You know, it's like, yeah. What I really care about is, are people still watching my videos? If I'm getting good viewership per video, then I'm happy. And if I'm not getting good viewership per video, then I'm sad, you know? <laughs> and if I have 10 million subscribers, I actually don't give a fuck if I'm not getting views in, on per video. Um, so that's the metric that I'm most focused on. Uh, yeah, right. That's what sort of motivates me the most. And I think people will be surprised to know that your thumbnails are done in PowerPoint, aren't they? No, they're not, you fucking liar. <laughs> Fuck off, as if. <laughs> Cringe, as if. Making PowerPoint thumbnail. What's Dude, please, oh, hey. no. Anyway, what's the next topic? What's the next question you've got? I like, I like your thumbnails, man. <laughs> I like them. they're clean. Well, they to be fair, Austin actually does the this week in games thumbnails. Um, okay. but everything else I do, I do all the other review thumbnails and they're only they're clean because I don't have the skills to make them not clean. I, I don't have the skills <laughs> to make them more interesting and put, <laughs> apply other visual effects. So um yeah, but it also it worked a lot easier when I was doing the whole like I used to do a lot of clickbait, like the, the clickbait titles on my videos. And I've stopped like doing what? those now. Like what? Oh well like 
you know the masterpiece you won't play and oh and now, you, now you just and, do uh, I, recommend I can't believe it, yeah. this is free for warframe or i did not enjoy this at all for you know not clickbait in the sense that i'm lying but clickbait in that sense where it's like here's something like here's a big grab you know here's here's that thing that's going to catch your attention when you're scrolling but i don't do that anymore because people got too upset about those those titles and they felt like they were obnoxious and i kind of agreed in the end i was like i don't need to do these anymore so i'm going to stop you know um it's interesting that you do like i recommend and i Mm. i because not many people do that you're sort of giving away it's sort of an anti-clickbait but it it works but this works. is the thing. The, the The reason that those thumbnails exist in that ti- in that title format is because I became self-conscious where whenever my name came up anywhere, people would be like, oh, I, you know, I like his videos, but his thumbnails are so shit. And then someone else would be like, yeah, man, I can't click on his videos. His thumbnails fucking suck. He's so clickbait, whatever else. And I was like, well, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to make videos that are detailed. I'm trying to have a good conversation with the audience. I'm trying to bring some nuance to the discussion. But then I have these big like, blah, blah, blah in the title. I'm like, yeah, I can see how that sucks. So then I'm like, well, what's the exact opposite to clickbait? The exact opposite is just (laughs) telling people the conclusion to the video in the fucking title. And so I do that now. But then some people are like, that's clickbait, man. When you say you don't recommend a game, that's clickbait. It's like, no, it's not. Go and look up the definition of clickbait. That is exactly not what it is. Uh, so you can't really win. You can't that, win, so. man. You no, can't win. No. Oh, far out. That's so funny. So who do you watch these days on YouTube? I'm interested to know, man. Because- yeah, good question. So uh, I watch, obviously, my good friend, Jake Baldino and The Completionist. I don't know, because I have a podcast now with those guys. And um, so, yeah, like yeah, you had Susie on, a friend stuff. of mine, Sophia. Sophia yeah, Hunter. Susie, yeah, absolutely, yep. S- super talented, amazing. I know she's doing stuff with G Four very soon, <laughs> which I'm really keen to see. Um, I really love As As to Cross, who's a Destiny YouTuber. Oh, yeah. He, if anyone knows him, he's just super positive, got tremendous amounts of like swagger, uh, just like super talented. He's definitely one of the biggest uh, Destiny YouTubers for a reason. I just really love his shit. Um. Yeah, I really like uh, Chris Duckman's movie reviews, actually. Do you? Um, nice, man. Yeah, I do, yeah. actually. I, re- I like, because I like him as a person, you know. Me too. And I just like listening to him as a person talking about movies. And I love that he's going on that kind of creative journey where he's making his own film. You know, I really love that. Um, yeah, he's a legend. Mm. Yeah, I watch uh, a little bit of Dado for some more Destiny stuff. You know who I'm watching a lot more lately? Force. I don't know if you know Force Gaming. Force gaming, no. Yeah, so he used to do Overwatch back in the day and then he transitioned to general coverage. Um he is like general commentary and stuff. I I think you'd like him. Okay. Um, he is just a very grounded, down to earth dude. I've been watching him on and off over the years, but he's lately he's just his content's really just great. And it's just interesting to listen to his takes on things. He unearths excuse me. He unearths some interesting topics and handles them really well. Yeah. So I really like him. Um yeah, girlfriend reviews, obviously, and uh, I'm just looking down my sub so, list now and seeing. What do you? Yeah. Any any Aussies in there besides me and G Man? I watch G Man. I watch yeah. G Man for sure. Yeah. I, uh, not all of his stuff because I'm not as close to the boomer shooter stuff <laughs> yeah. uh, that he sort of specializes in. Yeah. Uh, but I watch him and <clears throat> other Aussies. Oh, the Jez is another Destiny YouTuber. He's a very good friend of mine, actually. The Jez, fantastic guy. I do watch his stuff as well. Um, cool. Who else in Australia? Who else in Australia makes content? <laughs> like who? Who? Like no, seriously though. Who? Like, no, the they're Fortnite all Fortnite. Massive, they're all Fortnite men. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and after we're, that, I don't know. We're like, literally one of ten. <laughs> you and me, two of I ten. Cannot, there's not many. I, I, yeah, yeah. There's really not. There's mm. it's a it's a small scene outside of those Fortnite guys. But just but it's funny though because the Fortnite guys are the biggest. Like Australia is like the center of the Fortnite universe for some know, weird right? reason. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Isn't yeah, that funny? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So because ha- I feel like, now I don't want to get you in trouble, but I feel like you have said before that you're not a fan of some of the bigger outlets, how they do reviews, IGNs, Polygons. How do you, think, yeah. how do you, how do you feel about them these days? I, I think that... I have learned a lot about how this industry works. Mm-hmm. And I what I've I think come to realize is that there's a variety of different approaches needed. 
I think back when I was starting out and I had my own whatever, I was like, well, obviously this is the way that all games should be reviewed because this is how I'm doing it and I'm right. And I think obviously we can all point to specific reviews from specific outlets that are not great and be like, oh, come on now, that's a bit silly. But people can do exactly the same thing for the stuff that I've made. You know, I think part of my journey within this industry has been me maturing and understanding that there are different ways to do things and different perspectives that need to be heard. And um, yeah, so, so, so do I think that IGN could do a better job of its reviews? Yes, every outlet could do a better job. I could do a better job. Specific to those major outlets, I really think they could do a better job of bringing in more perspectives in terms of who's reviewing their stuff. As in, like, rather than just having one person review it, you've got a whole staff of people. Maybe get three people review it. And you know what I mean? Like, that'd be an interesting angle. I'd really like that. And combine Um, them or something. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And similar, at the same time, alternate or alternatively, really try and build out the the profile of the people that are doing those reviews so you can actually couch like you can understand who's reviewing a game like for example there's a guy called luke riley who does all racing of ign's car stuff and that's cool because you know that he's the guy that does the car stuff and he's like you know he's played all the things and you've watched him for a while in the context of those things and it's like you're able to build this connection to him as an ign reviewer who specializes in a subject area and he's an Aussie, I think, I think be- by the way <laughs> he is actually yes, yeah. So I think again, yeah. these these outlets with these with these larger teams and these and and more resources at their disposal, I think it would make sense for them to make those sorts of like to have a person who specialises in this one type of genre, or to bring in multiple voices into a um into a review process, right? Yeah. But do I think, uh, as I said, edgy boy stuff that I might have thought three or four years ago about like, oh, Polygon's reviews suck. I don't think that. I think I don't think that at all. I, th- I think some of their reviews suck, just like some of my reviews suck. That's just how it goes, you know. Yeah. Um, and I've I've definitely learned a lot about how that all works in this time. And this this might be a weird question, but I actually want to know your thoughts on Metacritic as a system sure. and as a site. Yeah. What do you think of that? Because some of the outlets on Metacritic, you, I feel like. Should they be there is questionable. That's just my take. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I love Metacritic, to be honest with you. I think mm. it's fascinating. Uh, everyone's like, oh, scores are so bad. I'm like, well, I don't use scores personally, but I actually also find them useful as someone who consumes content. Uh, I think they are that kind of like gun to head moment where it's like, all right, you've done all this talking, but tell me how good is it actually you know and you're like ah, oh, it's an 8.7 uh, uh and so i think adding up all those scores and averaging them out i think is interesting because it does give you a pretty clear indication of overall where's an industry at are some yeah. reviews going to be overcooked and too complimentary when they shouldn't be of course are some of them going to be really bad and miss the mark and misunderstand the game or whatever of course but on the whole, I think Metacritic generally gets it right in terms of you can look back on a game and be like, well, yeah, it probably did deserve that score overall, you know. Um, and I, But I think Steam reviews are probably a more useful metric overall, uh, except when yeah. the review bombing kicks in. But yeah, because obviously people have owned games. You have to own the game and play it. To I like that Steam. system, yeah. Because you can see how many hours good. they've played and it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, the Metacritic user score complete trash. It's only good for comedy. Like it's just funny, you know. Like <laughs> yeah, you know, Corey in the house on Nintendo, how it has like a nine point nine user score. Have you seen that? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. Um, oh, man. So yeah, um, no. So I'm I'm all for Metacritic. I think the whole like oh agonizing over the value of Metacritic, I think is not not really that useful. I think I, I yeah. Okay. And have you ever thought about because you could technically get on that side? I believe like if you started scoring. I'm on- because you're on open. I'm on open critic. Yeah, yeah. I'm on open critic. Yeah. I mean, I again, it's like I probably good, but I don't care. Like yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. I'm on open critic because they emailed me and they invited me on. I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. Thanks. Um But you but don't do scores? Metacritic. You don't do scores still. No, I don't no. do any scores. No, no, no. Do you say yes or no critic, or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, open critic okay. have a recommend versus not recommend right. um metric. And so that's just what I Well, use. that works for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, um, right. So, mm-hmm. Um He's definitely been on Reddit long. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, I live on Reddit. Come I on, mean, please. We all do. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, your nice. reviews do get circled around Reddit, that's for sure. I know oh, that. is that what you mean? No, right, sure. No, I yeah. I think I mean, like, I spend my time browsing Reddit. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. What do you browse? Just 
different game. I mean, the, I have my go-to subs. Uh, we know like, Destiny, uh, but yeah. Obviously Destiny. There's the game subreddit, which is, I think, the the main subreddit in all of the video, video game doom. Yeah. Um, PC gaming can be pretty mixed. Uh, sometimes it has some really bad takes that get elevated to the top. <laughs> uh, gaming circle jerk is uh, regular. That's uh, quite cathartic at times um what else uh gaming leaks and rumors is actually really good and i it's almost like a low-key secret there's so much actual news that gets surfaced in gaming leaks and rumors first and that gets trickled out to the rest of the industry after that i know um not all of it's right obviously but enough of it is right that it's like worth paying attention to so um i i do like that i really like randomly uh, see my my stuff on there sometimes oh really find like a little bit of what i said about of a course. voice actor from this Resident Evil video, and they'll yes, this you know, and they'll just put it on. It's it's very interesting. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Oh, um, sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say Patient Gamers. I don't know if you know this one. Patient um, Gamers. No. If you, look, if you don't, if you don't know Patient Gamers, I really recommend checking it out. To be fair, I haven't actually checked it out in the last few weeks, but um, okay. every time I, it's a really fascinating uh, subreddit because they only talk about older games. Uh, so, like, for example, oh, I'm looking okay. at there today. It's like, Yoshi's Island is a masterpiece. Pillars of Eternity. Interesting story. Weak combat. How to play Skyrim and actually have fun, right? So, it's this <laughs> idea that you play, you're playing a game much later after the zeitgeist has moved on. Mm. And the conversation is always much more interesting, insightful, constructive. It's it's really doesn't have a lot of room for toxicity. Like, you know, the mods in that community will just kick those people straight out if they start acting like children. That's good. So it's That's actually good. a really great place for actual proper video game discourse. So That's yeah. awesome. So your direct the oh direction gosh, of your channel, uh I know you've um you did the reviews and now you've started the news segment, which is really great. Yeah. And now you've gone on top of that with the podcast. So you really yeah, are yeah. trying to expand, aren't you? You're trying to do a few new little bits and pieces here and there sure Mm. sure um i think expansion is probably not the right word but i think you know certainly covid lockdowns two years you know it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a lonely job this this gig you know and um it's very much like oh here's my perspective on a video game and then you get some YouTube comment section, like the YouTube comment section comes back at you, but that's it. It's not really a dialogue. And I was like, well, I really want to sort of be challenged on some of the things that I put out there and have some interesting conversation about that with people that I really respect. And so the podcast was born not out of a desire to expand, but kind of just have cool chats with people that I like. That was it ultimately. And um, Did you pick those three I... personally? Were they always the three? Yeah, well, I, I picked picked but i approached jake baldino first because he's just always been one of my favorite people and then like we together started talking about who else who else we would want to do it with and um and yeah like gerard and lucy were kind enough to say yes and that was it so yeah Mm. i Mm. i i heard you on that podcast say you don't have any hobbies which i found yeah yeah it's terrible very interesting you don't have any at all man you surely you But like do. okay, well what are your what are your hobbies? Tell me what are your hobbies? Besides consuming media. Besides consuming media, I do not believe is a hobby. <laughs> well, you know, I like hiking and golf. Oh, that's cool. Table, that's ho- those table are tennis and those are hobbies. Going to the I, I rugby. That. I don't know. Okay, that's nice. I don't I don't do any of those Blackjack. things. Blackjack. <laughs> you play Blackjack what yeah. at the at fucking, the Crown fucking Crown Casino. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. No. I, um, I don't think I've been there in years, but you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, and look, and that's the thing, I, as I said on the podcast, I actually do lament that part of my my life currently, you know, because I do believe that you need to fill your life with different things otherwise you're not going to be good at anything really if you're just doing that if you're doing just one thing right so i'm playing a lot of video games right now and i try and read some books and whatever but you know i used to play tennis back in the day i would love to be able to get back to tennis that'd be fantastic make more regular trips to the gym would be awesome um yeah yeah i'd love to have i'd love to like join a weekly book club or whatever whatever i don't know you know i think that filling yourself up with uh those sorts of things is really good for every part of yourself um, but, and I do, and I do kind of lament the fact that I'm not doing that right now, but it, like time, man, it's again with yeah, a family, with work, 
it's just like, yeah, it's tough. It's super tough. Very tough. All right, I'll give you a couple more because I know you you got a busy day ahead. I'm sure. Actually, yeah. Oh, l- no. Luckily, this now. No, well, I'm saying I've got time. Basically, <laughs> okay. Is, but, uh, okay. The last, like, the Last of Us was my last big embargo for the next little while because I think the next big thing is like, uh, Dude, do you Mel know what, Helsinger. Do you know what I was playing last night? What? What you just said? What? Uh, Mel Helsinger. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, you uh, wait. What you're playing the demo? No, full release. You should get onto it. I'll give you the. That's contact. crazy. Yeah, man. That's already out. I was the first person in the world to play it. Dead set. That's amazing. How yeah. is it? I can't say. <laughs> I'll, no, tell right, okay, sure. I'll tell you off air. I'll tell you off air. I'll tell you off air. But sure. um, all yeah, right, cool, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. You should, you should I will definitely look into that, man, because they'll definitely give you. They follow you. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. Well, I hung out with the the lead developer when I was in LA recently, actually. Um, because I was there for Summer Games Fest. Uh, I'm gonna be really rude and say that I don't remember his name, but he was a really nice guy, and he was, was he the bald? lead combat. No, he wasn't. He was okay. a young guy, actually. Okay, he was like wasn't. 20... He'd be like 26, 27. Okay. Uh, he was like the lead combat designer on it. And um, yeah, we had a really great time. It was at a very loud bar, so I couldn't hear a lot of what he was saying or whatever. But um, <laughs> it was yeah, it was fun. But I was like, dude, you made a really cool game because I played the demo and it was fantastic. So I was demo was sick. For the final demo release. was yeah. sick. Yeah, so definitely yeah. get onto that. But you, So you got... I'm guessing you're going to review Plague Tale, Gotham Knights, God of War. Yeah. Scor- oh, uh, Are you going to do Scorn? Too. Do you know what Scorn is? Oh! Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If like if it's actually comes out, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. that's the question mark for that. Overwatch one. two, um, that'll be a very interesting. I'm review. not gonna. Yeah, definitely not gonna review that one. Oh really? I couldn't. Well, it's it'd be like I, it'd be like me trying to review Warzone two. I think almost. I mean, like, really? Okay. Uh, there is a campaign again, side. I, of course, but Modern Warfare two, sure. But Warzone two, could I review Warzone two? Right. I don't think so. You know, right. it's that kind of thing. I think that. There's so much that needs that you need to understand about Overwatch to be able to speak about it, um, you know. And and I think as well, like, look, you could bring anyone could bring a perspective to any game, uh, and you step into it and be like, hey, I don't really know what I'm doing, but here's what I think overall of Overwatch Two. I think that's useful in its own way, but I think that there are lots of people who really do understand what Overwatch is and are going to be able to do a far better review than I could ever do. So I'm not really interested in just doing that kind of thing. Maybe, maybe I don't want to rule myself out. Maybe I play some Overwatch and I'm like, hey, this is super cool and I want to talk about it's it. It's not on your radar, yeah. It's definitely on my radar, for sure. No way. And uh, as I said, same for Call of Duty where I'm, I might review the campaign, but not anything else. And um, yeah, there's also uh, Mario Rabbids is one that I'm actually really keen on. Uh, tell us on the Borderlands. What about I NBA 2K23? Oh, that, I was just getting to that, Dan. Come on, man. Give me a second, please. You know, oh, of man. course, that's high on my list. Jesus. Uh, Christ. there's also uh, Skull and Bones from Ubisoft. Oh, is that coming out this um, year? That's that's November. Yeah, no, that's way. actually the same day or just the day before oh, God they're of joking. War Ragnarok. They're trying to bury so that. Funny. Thing. <laughs> they're trying to bury that. Like, surely. what are they doing? Uh, so there's that and there's another one that's launching the same oh sonic is launching the same day as god of war as well ha- again why, why? that's I, they bizarre, just want to just want to kill like they just want to kill their own games they don't want them to be talked about on social media they just think yeah sure do you know, I don't what, know, man. Do you know what it reminds why. me of it reminds me of horizon the first one came out sure no when the first one came out with breath of the wild when that was out. Yep. And then this right. one, Elden Ring. Elden I mean, Ring. they're right. trying to kill the them. Horizon 3 coming out same day as Grand, Trism- <laughs> as, uh, Grand Theft Auto 6. Just bet. 100%. Bet. Oh, man. It's like, so, uh, guys, just even yeah. a week before, surely it's gone gold. Like, mm. uh, what about- But I think Dark Tide uh, is big for me. I'm really excited for Dark Tide at the end of the year. That's in November, on, 30, on the 30th of November. Dark Tide, yeah. um, Warhammer. Yep. 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 That's and, the FPS. Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Callisto Protocol, obviously. That oh, man. Don't sick. get me started on that. I can't wait for mm. that game. Mm-hmm. I think that's my most so, uh, anticipated game. Yeah. Have you seen these uh, high on life clips that, that, that have done the rounds on Twitter? Mate, that generated <laughs> so much press. It's insane, <laughs> yeah, know, right? man. Yeah, yeah. Did you think it's funny? Can I be real? I thought it was funny. Like, everyone's like, this is terrible. I'm like... I kind of think it's a little bit funny, you know. Is it because we're Australian so. and that voice actors, <laughs> and the voice actors? Maybe, is... maybe we're sympathetic, we're biased, maybe. But um, I thought it was just I... a, n- a normal day down at Frankston. 
you know Frankston? Yeah. I do. Uh, I know the reputation of Frankston. Okay. Even we in yeah. Sydney know the reputation of Frankston. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, no, I mean, I think it looks fine. But I also like Rig and Morty. So I'm, you know, naturally predisposed to that sort of humor. But uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a chance. It looks pretty good to me. Is that out this year as well? Shit. Yeah, yeah. That's just got pushed to like uh, 12th Man. of December, I believe. Yeah, 13th of what December. What about something so. like Goat Simulator? Will you cover that? That's the kind of thing I'll play for fun. I reckon maybe yeah. just do a few clips on Twitter and be like, "Hey, this is a laugh." You know, it does. Goat Simulator need a review? <laughs> maybe in the same way that Man Eater needed a review, where it's like, "Let's just take the piss out of this for seven minutes and see how far we can get with it." Um, so yeah, that's actually one review I probably am quite proud of the Man Eater review in retrospect. <laughs> oh, is so, that the one where you, uh, you straight after the Last of Us? Yes. Oh man, that was brilliant. I agree. That is my favorite of yours. That, that was, was brilliant, man. A shit post. You really just a like fuck this. So... I'm. You just said fuck this. I'm gonna just do this. That was brilliant. Man. Yeah, oh, that, that takes some time. guts to do. So, what are your most anticipated games, man? Callisto. I'm guessing. Is that uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was yeah. said Callisto is big up there. Um, Dark Tide. I'm wondering if that's actually my most anticipated game at this point why is it, it why looks... is have you played it or something or what i have played it i played okay. it when i was in la and it right. was really fantastic i'm also like dabbling in uh warhammer a little bit at this point like oh, i'm, I'm nice. reading some books and i've never been a big warhammer guy but i've always enjoyed it from afar there's but, a lot um, of lore I'm... isn't there like oh dude it's crazy like dozens of books and whatever it's crazy so um yeah, yeah i think that looks really great i'm really keen for that and i would say um yeah you know that's kind of the two what about starfield ones, I would say. what do you think of starfield <laughs> oh, what do you what do you think of starfield <laughs> what do you think of starfield uh, well i don't mind what i've seen to be honest but will it will it turn out to be like that you know can i i you know I, what I, mean? I don't think i didn't look at any part of that and think oh they're not going to deliver on this I, I think you, I, I think they'll yeah, okay. I think they'll deliver on all of it. I think because I mean even then it was running at like not even thirty FPS. I, so and it didn't look that great. So I don't think they were kind of like trying to oversell the graphic, the visual side of it, the story stuff. Excuse me, look like standard Bethesda storytelling where it's like, hey, um, you know, you stand in front of an NPC while they awkwardly stare at you and say lines, and uh, <laughs> the the base building stuff looks super cool. The ship building stuff looked great. I'm. I look. I think it's going to be cool. I'm up for it. I. But I am really just not down for like Bethesda at this point. I don't know, man. After Fallout seventy six, I really noped out on that studio big time. So they blacklisted uh, you, did they? After that review? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So fine. All good. All power to them. No. No hard feelings. That's how it goes. So um, is that the only people that are blacklisted? Because you've actually, I respect Ubisoft as well because. You've sure. been pretty harsh, not harsh, but the, your opinions yep. have ended up, you know, you haven't liked all their games sure. and they still give codes out every time early. They're pretty good like that. Like I I, I would say I've definitely taken plenty of swings at Ubisoft for a variety of things, both their games and their company culture stuff, but they still like they are willing to hear that and they do, they have not blacklisted me and I respect that they're willing to do that. The, I mean, again, I deal with the Australian team. I think the, the Australian team that I deal with, they're very they're great. nice people. They're really great. Yeah. Um, really top top tier people that I've always enjoyed chatting with and whatever else. So, um, yeah. But again, I respect any company that's willing to take it on the chin and roll with it. Um, like EA as well. Like I'm not blacklisted by them. Uh, they gave me coverage for Battlefield, even though I've certainly said my fair share of stuff about EA. Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, fair enough. That's good. Um. So yeah, I also think it's just about people know what I'm about these days as well. Like most people who work in the PR side of this, if they've seen me over time, they'll know what I'm about. They know how I talk about things. They know that, you know, every publisher is fair game, you know? Mm. Um, it's uh, if I see something that I think is shit, I just say it's shit. Uh, <laughs> and that's that. And it's like, you don't take it personally, Mr. Publisher person or Mrs. Publisher person. Like it just is what it is. Uh, and I think most people, people kind of get that in the industry at this point that i'm that i'm dealing with so yeah nude man frankston is global not even nationwide <laughs> people in europe are familiar with frankston <laughs> it's legendary it's that good i don't know about that man. it's like the geordie shore of australia kind of thing 
Love it. I mean, it's it's not that bad, guys. All right. Come on, don't be. Hey, are you familiar with a YouTube channel, Ralph, called Michael Does Live? I am. <laughs> you are. You are, aren't you? I am. Do you have any thoughts on him? <laughs> um. You can say no comment if you want. Oh, uh, I think man. he's a interesting performance artist. That's <laughs> how, how I put it. That's just probably as far as I go with my commentary on Michael Does Live. <laughs> oh, my God. Good actor. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Maybe. <laughs> hey, I noticed that you don't actually stream much at all. Is no. That, no. Are, are, you, are you ever going to stream? Do you think you're ever going well, to? Well, yeah. Well, because I used to stream back in the day. And again, that was that, um, that's around the same time that I had made the decision about Lehman is kind of when I made the decision about streams. Okay. Um, where streaming, cause I don't know, you stream, right? Yeah. Yeah. How often, how often, how many hours, like a week kind of thing? Well, at the moment I'm, I'm playing Red Dead with the John Marston actor. So that's, Whoa. yeah. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's, it's a bit that's of fun. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. That's, that's like a whole director's. That's like a director's commentary yeah. track that people can get from your channel. That's sick. He's never he's never played it, so he's just watching Wait, me. What? He's yeah, I know. So he's watching me play it and reacting for the first time, and he's seen stuff, but he's sure. never fully fully played it himself or anything. So we're getting. I've got him on, and then some other actors from the game to do. Can know. I ask how do you do that? Can I just ask because I look down your your thing and i'm just like what the f you just getting all these fucking people there's just like you how are you how do you get this dude this, I, how I, do you get access to all these people okay. what's the hustle what's your secret what's you want to know my source, secret man? it's amazing it's called hassling <laughs> until they just say <laughs> fuck it just let Fine, him fuck it i'll yeah. come on you know? no no it's so. to be honest i've had a hundred guests on this show i reckon i've been denied by about 300 people. So I've got a sure. strike rate of 25%, really. That's But you don't no one sees that. No one sees that. Yeah, I sure, mean, you sure. you started doing interviews haven't you on your um podcast. Yep. Which I Yep, yep, yep. So yeah. are you how are you doing that? Are you planning out who you're getting in advance? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are. It's that's a huge focus for us because we really feel like given the sort of audiences that we have it does make it easier to get people on board yeah um i haven't actually announced this yet but we actually have uh one of the code leaders of devolver digital joining us next week um for, for what podcast for what game is there for a game just to talk about devolver okay. digital yeah and just nice. be like yo you built like the biggest indie publishing label on the planet uh incredible track record able to like you know capture lightning in a bottle very regularly what's the deal so um <laughs> yeah. that's conversation cool. that we're all really interested in um and then we've got some other guests lined up as well which i won't spoil but some pretty big names that we're really quite happy with um, YouTubers and again that's to, or uh no people in industry industry only you're trying to industry. go that that route uh not only not no. only because we had Susie, for example you yeah. know um it, it depends it, it really depends like you know if if uh another fromsoft game is going to come out let's get vardy video on like sure let's do that you know what i mean again like it doesn't we're just interested in whatever we want whatever interests us and whoever's right to talk about that um but yeah the guests it is about hustle you're right it's just about getting out there and getting in people's inboxes and whatever but i definitely looked at your channel and was really like blown away by just the range of people you got and thank you you man. know it's fairly fantastic it's just awesome i appreciate that man um no drive by commentator how's it going fellas any backlog titles you wish you could get to but don't have the time, man. Fuck me. I could give you my backlog. Fuck. Yeah, let's let's. It's so yeah, fucking it. huge. It's unbelievable. I just don't have I time. Have, I have like a list of like like games overall that I haven't played that I feel bad about. And then there's like indies that I haven't played that I feel bad about. Then I have games this year that I haven't played that I feel bad about. There's the the pile of shame is out of control. Like my, I haven't played any of the new Hitman trilogy. For oh example. man! Oh, I haven't played no. Half Life Alex for any more than a few minutes. Yeah. Um. I mean, I played a little bit of the Yakuza series, but I really want to play the whole thing. You've got a list that uh, you, like me. I can't believe. Dude, it, I actually have man. a proper list. I'm not making these We're up. So like I'm reading this here. You know. Fucking hell! I so, got a list um, too of all these fucking games. On the top of my list, don't kill me, everybody. The Mass Effect series. I've never, oh shit! I know it's Brutal. terrible. It's terrible. That's that's very bad. You should do that and just and then get the Commander Shepard uh, voice actor well, or I've voice had actress her, to I've play along her, with you. I've had her on. You've had her on. 
Right. Yeah, okay. But, uh, well, then that's no excuse to be like you interviewed her without having played Metal Gear. You were like that dude Mass that effect. interviewed. Mass no, you were like that dude who interviewed. Uh, what was her name? The uh, Adele. And he's like, I haven't listened to your album, but tell me about your new album. And you got dragged. That that's you. Okay, you're the same. You're the same oh, as that guy. God. <laughs> Shit, you're I like am, literally. I, I, I hear Mass Effect shit. is a really good game. Tell me about it. <laughs> oh man, I know it's it's bad. I know, I know it's bad. But I've covered most of the other big series: Bioshock, Dead sure. Space. Sun, you know, we can go through the list. But yeah, I'd say Mass Effect is my biggest one. What did you say your biggest one was? A couple of indies. Uh no. Well, biggest one. I mean, as I said, I haven't played the the Hitman series, which I feel very Hit- bad yeah, about. Yeah, that's the yeah. I played about 20 to 5 to 30 hours of Persona 5 and then I just had to stop because I had to move on to other things, but I really want to go back and finish that at some point. Yep. Um, yeah, I feel like most other stuff I've, I've ticked the box at this point. I'm sure there's others that people are like, what about this? I'm like, yeah, you're right. I haven't played Streets of Rage 4, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> as, much, as, as much as I do because that's meant to be pretty good actually. So, yeah. And I think people, this is a different, different thing, but your office flooded, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This office right here. This so office we're carpet, in now flooded. This this carpet that you see here uh, was not here for a while because the whole place got flooded. It was up to... An, Dude, uh, like that's scary. This much, this much water. Uh, and because well, I mean, you, fuck you were because you, did you get big rain where you were? In yeah, but no, nothing like flooding, man. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was. It's actually to do with like the layout of my property more than anything. Like, it wasn't like all the streets here were flooded. Having okay. said that, other parts of Sydney were absolutely underwater. Like where my <laughs> mother-in-law lives, her her neighbors had to be evacuated by a dinghy, like on the street that they were in in the wow. out of like western suburbs of Sydney. So yeah, but no. So this office was really fucked, and as I said, um, had to pull out all the carpet, and replace everything, and not everything, but a bunch of stuff. Um, could have been a lot worse, but yeah, it was um, it was a real pain. Shit, man. That that mm. and and what did you do with the computer and everything? You just well, the computer sits here on the ta- on the desk, so that was safe. So you just left um, it. You left it going. Yeah. Oh no, everything was off because all the powerpoints got flooded, so the power shorted straight out. Yeah, yeah but you um, just left it there and then got rid of the water and got a new car oh well no i had to no I, the, all the water drained and you had to like bring in some people to like dry the place out over days and the carpet gets pulled and then you have to like <laughs> remove all the furniture to put the new carpet in oh. just, dude that whole process literally took me three months to to get it Jesus. back to where it is now took three months yeah so, it's done it's all good it's one annoying but it happens all right ralph big questions now this will be toughest question all day all right here we go here we go give me top three movies Ooh, man, that's tough. Off the right at the top. Okay, you're gonna say uh, Robocop number one. Obviously. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's oh, that's fact. Yeah, I'm gonna say uh, Hook, Steven Spielberg, greatly oh, underappreciated. Really, absolute banger of a film. Okay, and um, I'm a real sucker for the Kill Bill movies. Oh, I really think Tarantino. That they are. Yeah. I wonder, I don't think they're as good as Pulp Fiction in terms of his best work, mm. but I just love his like genre bending, like the way he just smashes a whole bunch of tropes together with such confidence and just, I love it. So I could watch Kill Bill endlessly and um, yeah, and obviously the Lord of the Rings movies, but that's kind of generic. I think we all like have those high on our lists, but I they're think, my top three. I think that show comes out today, hey, Lord of the Rings. It on is Amazon. God. Oh man. <laughs> Talk about discourse. That's gonna be rough. I'm gonna stay <laughs> off Twitter after that for like a week or however long the series runs. Oh so, man. Yes. Are you watching um Game of Thrones as well? Uh House no, I'm just about to start that tonight actually, because yeah. again, I've been so busy lately, I've just put everything else to the side. Yeah. The thing I'm watching re- I'm, the thing I'm watching right now is a rewatch of the Sopranos, my third time. Oh, through, what a of show, course. man. What a show. That's uh I just keep rewatching the Sopranos rather than watching anything new. I haven't even started season three of the boys yet. Which great show! I'm so keen on season three. Great Everyone show! Says it's just awesome. Um, yeah. So the, and the Wire. Expanse, actually, I'm just about to, yeah. The Wire, obviously. The Wire, I've rewatched, rewatched three times as well, maybe more. Um, and The West Wing actually is my guilty indulgence, which a lot of people think is cringe. I at haven't this point. watched I think West it's Wing. Aged, yeah, it's aged pretty badly, I think, uh, in this era, a very much more combative, divisive era. But uh, The West Wing was definitely a, a favourite of mine for sure. Do you watch any Australian TV at all? 
Dude, no one watches any Australian TV. Come on. We're we going to watch fucking Kerry Bigmore and The Project talk to her. Oh, name? God. Like Steve Price oh. talk to us about how actually you just need to save up more and then you'll be able to afford a house no problem. <laughs> like, I hate Australian television. I hate all reality television, except for The Bachelor, which for oh, some reason, no, it's Ralph, past, I think it's because my wife made me watch Ralph. it. And I'm like, you know what? This no. is all right. Come this is on. okay. I'm. But I've actually, I've, I think I've watched maybe seven seasons of The Bachelor to this point, And now I'm like, I'm over The Bachelor now, man. It's, it's, I'm, I've now joined the rest of the populace that are like, nah, this is not a good idea. So you don't, you don't like um, My Kitchen Rules or Big Brother? <laughs> <laughs> Which one's the guy, with the, the guy that wears the, the fat guy, the cook who wears that thing in his neck? What was it called? Uh, Matt, Matt Preston. Preston. Is that his name? Yeah, Matt Preston. That's the one. Yeah. I've, I've seen episodes of that. He got... Uh, na- he got Neighbours has been yeah. cancelled. Yeah, Neighbours uh, is gone. You're not watching Home and Away with the wife after... <laughs> <laughs> after a hard day, kick back. Have yourself a light 4X and watch some Home and Away, of course. Uh, oh, no, that's not really my jam. So, Who watches uh, television, though, man? Do you watch any television, like, on television? I'm watching... I think I watch... No. <laughs> no, no not, see? Not really, no. I don't understand how these people make money. Like, what's the business? It must just be 60-year-olds like, it's the older, watching television yeah, it's at this the older point. older generation, yeah. Yeah. Like, wh- where is Channel 10... 12 years like 10 or 12 years from now fuck man i don't know <laughs> do you reckon yeah they could I, I always say i feel like they're just gonna be gone or something yeah because yeah i just yeah, yeah yeah any any tv show that ever gets talked about is on a streaming platform and that's it and then the only other tv that is now exists is like cooking cooking shows reality tv shows and the news that's it <laughs> Uh, Seven thirty report. That's that's my jam. Sometimes you know. So I get my news off yeah. Twitter. I don't need to watch that depressing sure. thirty minute segment. <laughs> Lost, this pe- sure. this person's died. This person was yeah. killed. This was murdered. You know. Oh yeah. uh, man. So what streaming services do you actually own? I have all of them actually. Just because I'm like yeah. Because I just kind of even though I haven't had a chance to watch them lately, but. I actually I don't have Stan, but all the other ones I'm like Stan. yeah Disney Plus and binge and whatever so I can watch the HBOs and yeah. Netflix and all that sort of shit because I just jump around every now and then when I get the chance. But also my wife watches stuff, so I have them. And which one gets the most use? Binge man for HBO. HBO is like I don't know. Do you do you have binge? Do you have like do you watch HBO stuff? Yeah, I mean it's the the standard that they bring is over and above any other anything else. So um. Yeah, yeah man, it is. My, it really is. Yeah. Again, watching reruns, reruns of uh, Sopranos or uh, or <laughs> The Wire, it's got to be. It's got to be there. So, for your channel, as we wrap up here, um, what can what can audiences expect? Just more of more podcasts. Continue with the news, more reviews. You're just going to keep going and pushing. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And I I definitely think about that quite a bit. You know. Um. I think as you as you probably would, right? You're always thinking about here's what I'm doing today, but what am I doing six months from now, 12, 18, you know, two years from now? I think unless you're thinking in the future, you really have you run the risk of just beginning becoming quite stale and um, falling behind. Yeah. Um, I have very much of a view that like where I'm at now is good. I'm very happy with it. I really love what I'm doing. I'm really happy with the content that I'm making. But always thinking about, well, when when might that change? What might be the next frontier? You know, and I, I look at like TikTok, for example, right? And I started doing a little bit on TikTok because I'm just like, let's just feel this out. And I'm not doing TikTok correctly because there's a correct way to do it. And I'm not doing that. I'm doing something very different. But not because I feel like my way is better, but because I don't want to try and make TikToks that go viral and do that thing. I'm just like, that's not what I'm about. Right. And so I'm just kind of like feeling out that platform to see, well, uh, is there just a space on TikTok for people who want to hear a bit of a hot take on something? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Without it being a little dance skit or whatever. I don't know. You know, I look at YouTube yep. shorts and I'd be really interested to explore those, but I don't like the idea of having my channel spammed with all of this. Do you do shorts? Have you done shorts? No, I have a separate no, channel. Do shorts. Yeah. Oh, you do, right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I have right now. But again, I'm not doing anything with it. It's just there. Yeah, but, um, I, I sort of fell off, but I yeah. I know. Yeah, it's it's it, I think as well it it requires a very different mindset to be successful in that space. And I do not have the desire to direct my energy towards that mindset at this point when 
things are going pretty well with what I'm doing and I really like what I'm doing. I don't want to try and force that change to a different format of content Yeah. when I really like what I'm doing right now, you know, and it's working. So, but I do look at it a lot and I do wonder how much life this sort of long, t- long form platform has in so it. So you, like, you have ideas that you're cooking up for the future? No, I wouldn't or, say that. No, I, I, no, no, I would, I, it's more like, it's more like I've turned my attention to it to start learning, you know, because right. yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I think if you just close your mind off to short form video content right now, it's pretty dumb in this. I think we all need to be paying attention to it as content creators. Yeah. And so I don't have ideas for what I will do, but I'm just watching that those platforms to figure out, well, how does it all work and what might I be able to do in that space? Um, but again, I don't know when that might happen because I'm fully leveraged right now. Like I don't have any time for anything else. Yeah. You know, do I hire someone to make like shorts for me? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But uh, right now, it's really just focusing on more reviews and the news show and podcasts, which all make me really happy. I just I love what I do. I get out of bed every morning so excited to work. I really do. And um, I feel so lucky to be in that position. So I kind of just want to keep doing it for as long as my audience lets me, you know? That's awesome, man. And I think everyone listening and watching this, whether you're watching this in days from now, make sure you check out uh, Ralph's podcast, if you haven't already, FPS podcast, really good stuff. Great chemistry between you four as well. I like you all bring something different to the table, mm. which is good as well. Um, and yeah, I, they're really I, great guys. I actually but... like that you will stick to a topic for like 20 minutes. Yeah. I like that. I really like yeah, that. Yeah, we, we, we yeah. talked about that a lot as well because, again, we didn't want to just be like, hey, let's talk about the news a lot and just bang through news items because I think a lot of pod- pod podcasts do that. Also on my own channel, I do that once a week. And if you're watching the podcast on my channel, you probably also watch the news show. So we really said that we would try and focus on specific topics and delve into them. And so, yeah, that part we really like. And you put that news on Spotify, don't you? Does that do all right on Spotify or? No, it does shit on Spotify. In fact, it's funny. I'm actually about to stop doing it on Spotify, funnily enough. Oh, really? I think next week will actually, yeah, it's funny you ask that. Next week will be the last. Well, in, in large part because the the show that I put together is very visual. It's visual. Like, That's what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. And so, so the podcast is doing really well on podcast platforms because it's a podcast and it's designed to be listened to. But the news show is very much like, take a look at this trailer. Take a look at this put this on your radar and it's like whatever and so i think anyone watching that listening to that is going to eventually get annoyed and be like okay i'm done so that podcast is or that syndication of that new show on podcast platforms has not been successful that's fine i understand completely why uh, at I least will, you try um, it man yeah you got to try things yeah if you try it out i'm sorry about that uh simmy for you you're like the one of the few listeners on spotify i apologize but it will be available on youtube so you'll still have it but it's just available by other means so yeah yeah awesome man um, is there anything else? Now, what's you... next? For, what's next for you? For what's me, next, what's your what's next? What's your plan then? Is it uh, is it well, continuing with this? And do you have a grander ambitions? Things uh-huh. you're working towards? And well, I so um, what's the, road, what's the what's the what's the roadmap? The Dan Allen roadmap. Yeah, <laughs> what's Dan Allen yeah. roadmap? Um, for me, so I've done this interview show where I've interviewed a lot of voice actors, actors, YouTubers, that, and now I'm I'm transitioning. Into I want to play the games with these actors because that's a niche that no one's doing, you know. Sure. Like playing, it's like a director's commentary sort of thing. And yeah, I'd like to do that with the guy from Modern Warfare too when that comes out. Or sure, yeah, I've got a lot of friends. You know, maybe for Resident Evil Four, the person that plays Leon in that. Um, so I think that content would be great. But yeah, man, I'm just. I've I've started to take the approach, well, I'm trying to, of less videos, better quality. Because that's just, it's better better use of my time as well. Definitely. If you put more Definitely. time into a, a better idea than just pumping out a bunch of stuff, it could be still good. But if you stick to just better videos, then it, yeah. So I'd love, to do, that, I'd love I mean, to do this for... As as long as I can, like you, man. Sure. I mean, this is sure. this is a dream. As you know, we work a lot. I'm like you. I, I'm working till two a.m. I was up till four a.m. last night. So, um, but that's because I was playing Metal Hell Singer. So it's really like right, we, right, you right, know, right. you know what it's like. So it's 
Yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's a strange world, YouTube. It really is. It's, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, we we also I think we reflect a lot on job security in our business, which is like mm. I think for someone else working in the banking industry, it's like okay, well maybe Commonwealth Bank will make you redundant, <laughs> but you will be able to get a job at NAB or probably a different, uh, probably another job at Commonwealth Bank in a different department, and you have all these skills and this CV that you rack up over time and. You know, yeah. it, it, it's not, I don't want to say safe because I don't think it's fair to say that, but I think you can plan a career in a way that we can't because yeah. maybe this all ends tomorrow. Maybe it's like, actually people get bored of all our hot takes and people are like, actually you're done. And then <laughs> where are you? You're like, well, you go to an employee and I get a job now. And like, what have you been doing for the last, I've been playing video games for the past 15 years and talking about my opinions. Well, that's the thing. So I think I'm uniquely qualified <laughs> to take up this sales role in your regional office. Thank you very much. Uh, that's not going to work. So it's like, it's, it's, it is one of those things where, um, you know, you do reflect on, what if this doesn't work? And it can be quite scary sometimes, I think, yeah. Yeah, like if you, yeah, I hear that. What, Dan, what if you just, if YouTube's gone tomorrow yeah. and it's like, well, yeah, I guess that is a bit scary, but it's like, is YouTube going to just go? No, it's not. No. So that that gives me some reassurance. <laughs> sure, sure. But I mean, you sure. got things like Patreon and sponsor. I mean, mate, I think Squarespace should give you some stakes in the company. I think you should have to. I think you should own. Uh, I think you should own a majority of that company, mate. Because well, they no, they actually. Uh, I mean, they've had they've done sponsorships with like Zendaya, like all these like proper ass celebrities. Like they spend big on on um their advertising. Yeah. Uh. So no, but they've been really great as a sponsor for the channel, and I've been super lucky to have a few of those sorts of deals come through where you get a, you get a sponsor and it gives you a bit of comfort to be like cool you know yeah. i can keep the lights on i can keep austin employed and this is going to be okay you know what i mean yeah um so that's been really great when and people are pretty understanding as well on the channel now at first when sponsors were happening did you do any sponsors have you got all that have you got that going um yeah i mean i dabble in it i sure i've had like ridge like yourself ridge wallet and vpns and this and that sure. but I sort of need someone to handle that stuff for me at this point. Right. I need, I need yeah. to get someone because I'm doing it all myself. So I sort of need to palm that off. I'm sure you've got someone, but yeah. Um, yeah. It's just Getting finding an agency really helps with that. Yeah. yeah. Finding but the I, right I, I people. Think, definitely. And I think as well, audiences don't like it at first. But I think if you put out good, honest content regularly mm. and you treat your audience with respect and you, you know, you select it with the sponsors you select, then, you know. People are okay with it overall. You know, well, your I mean? integration is so, great because it's at the end, which is sure. actually a bit yeah. unique. Because most yeah, people, I've been lucky yeah. enough to negotiate that with partners. Because I'm like, look, I don't want to do front end stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't ever rule it out, but I haven't done a front end in years. I don't remember the last. In fact, I don't even know that I've ever done a front end. I, can't I don't. I don't think I I've seen you do a front end. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. But, but, yeah, but but which is a so deal I think, breaker. I, I thought it was a deal breaker is. for some. Yeah. It is. But I think, yeah, my agency just negotiated on my behalf and it's made it happen. And so people really like that. They're like, we really like that it's at the back end. You have a front end mention and then the back end and it keeps people happy, you know. So, um, yeah. 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 Man, thanks for taking the time today. I really appreciate it, man. Pleasure. And um, it's uh, really good finally chatting with you because I've obviously seen each other around these parts for yeah. years now, I suppose. We've been, you know, yeah. flirting on Twitter and whatever else. So <laughs> it's good to finally catch up. Uh, <laughs> flirting on Twitter. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No, I, I appreciate it, man. And um, is there anything else you wanted to plug or anything? Or Not really, man. I'm beautiful. Yeah, that's it. I'm all, well, had a great chat and really, really glad to have been here. So thanks for the invite. Mate. I wish, uh, I wish you all the best uh, with the family and um, I look forward to speaking with you again soon, man. For sure. All right, mate. All the best. See you, chat. Take Thanks, care. guys. Take care. The greatest interviewer of all time. Dan Allen Gaming. If there's one podcast you want to hear this year, it's Dan Allen Gaming. Dan, we've got a job to do. Mr. Allen, I've been waiting for you, Mr. Dan Allen. Anyone who's anyone has heard of the likes of you, especially your YouTube channel. It's amazingly entertaining. 
Good job. This is Geralt of Rivia, and you're watching Dan Allen Gaming. Yeah. This is Agent 47. Subscribe to Dan Allen Gaming. He's a great guy. I always, always knew we were destined for something great to happen. A lot of people want to change their cards, not me. I like the hand we've been dealt. I'm gonna come find you, little man thing. Dan, I knew you'd love me. Come on now, just a little taste. Dan Allen Gaming. He's a lovely boy. <laughs> Super Dan, you number one. Woohoo! This is Colt calling out to Dan the Animal Allen. I'm gonna break this fucking loop. Oh, I'm gonna break your neck. You're watching Dan Allen Gaming, and you're going to regret it. Dan, you and I are gonna take back the universe for humanity. We're having a problem with Metal Gear, and I need your help. So contact me by codec, damn it. Dan Allen, you and I are going dark now. Are you being cheeky, Dan? I'd rather keep this for close encounters. <laughs> Tune into Dan Allen Gaming, or else I'm coming after you. You're fucking down. I've been interviewed by Dan Allen of Dan Allen Gaming. Not to be mistaken for Van Allen. You know the belt? No, not the same guy. Not even related. Okay, Jackie Howard. All the best to you. Just don't cross me. Yeah. Dan Allen Gaming, you have got to be one of the best things to come out of Australia. Did you know that? You and me, we would have been unstoppable. Anyways, how lost for life, partner? Your face, your ass, what's the difference? It's okay, Dan. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. But you shouldn't have done that. It fucking hurts! Let's find out if Dan Allen Gaming really is the best fucking show in town. Dan! You eat babies! Everybody knows that! <laughs>